Okay, I'm going to call the Finance Committee meeting to order for July 13th at 5.31 p.m. Um, first off, welcome Mark Brennan, our new member. Can you hear us, John? Oh, good. Here's Beth. All right. Hi, Beth. <laughs> All right, so we're just called to order. Um, I want to welcome Mark Brennan, who is our newest Finance Committee member. Um, our other new member is going to be Dave Sharp, um, who is we're having out, hearing uh, issues, just so you know. Okay. Can you hear us? I can't hear. No? Oh, we can hear you. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah. Hmm. He could call in. Um, I don't know if anybody has his number to walk him through how to call in for audio. Um, John, do you want to leave and then come and then log in again? He might need a phone call. Text. To, or a text or something to get him or an email. Um, hmm. I'll Good actually, maybe he'll Just so you know, I can't hear you. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on. Anybody have his phone number? Um, I don't. Uh, maybe I do. Hang on. While we are doing that, um, Mark, could you um, um, send me your email address? Um, like in the, do we have a chat box we can use, like direct message? I can send it over to you, sure. Yeah, so that, that way you can get the, the electronic version of the minutes. Sounds good. Yep, we'll do. I don't see a chat anywhere. Um, uh, I think that got Probably removed. enabled or something. Yeah. Yeah, it right. got um disabled. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead with minutes review. Um, Jim, do you want to present the minutes of the last meeting? Uh, do I have them? I thought I posted them, but um, okay. Um, uh, hang on. I think you did too. Yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, let me open the town of Deerfield and uh, find the um, minutes of the finance committee. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Okay, so the most recent are April 5th that have been posted. I believe that was our last meeting, right? I have one. Oh, from the 19th, because you weren't there and Allison was. Hey, John, can you hear us now? But you're muted. Okay, well, if I wasn't there, no wonder we don't have a minute. Yeah, there we go. Okay, here we go. Here's um, a minutes from the 19th that... Um, Allison submitted. Has everybody seen these? Uh, I must have if I wrote them. <laughs> um, Do I remember them? No. <laughs> All right. It looks like we reviewed a bunch of budget items and voted them. Aren't articles. Was that when I was on my trip? I guess it was. Yeah, you were gone. Okay. And then overall budget and our next meeting was the 25th. 
which was the, the general which was town meeting, right. Okay. Do we have a motion for these minutes? I did make a motion to recommend them. I submitted them. <laughs> All right. A second. I still can't see them. Oh, you can't? I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Can other people see them shared? Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was still looking for stuff on my own desktop. desktop. Hi, Brenda. I don't know if it matters, but there looks like there's a slight typo just on the date of the town meeting. It says 125. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, because it's um whatever. Yeah. Okay. So the motion to approve the minutes as amended, did we get a second? That's seconded, right? Yes, okay. Any further discussion? No. Um, we have to do a roll call vote because we are remote. Um, Jim Cambius. Abstain. Mark Brennan. Uh, abstain. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John, are you here? John Pereski. Abstain. Okay. Oh gosh, I didn't count. So that was three, 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 three right? Yeah. Okay, so that passes. A close one. Uh, huh? That was a close one. Yeah. Phew. <laughs> um, okay, so next on the agenda is um, Positions, I think, for the um, the heck did my agenda go? There it is. Um, minutes review election to new positions. So we need to elect a chair, a vice chair, a secretary, a personnel board representative, oh, and a CIPC rep. Um, Julia, are, are you uh volunteering to be chair again? I would be happy to be chair again. I would be happy if somebody else wanted to do it. But. I would enthusiastically nominate <laughs> you. You did such a good job. You're never going to get out of it. Second. Third. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead and vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Don Pereski. Aye. I'm going to abstain. So that's 501 that passes. Um, Vice Chair. Thank you, Julie. Cool. <laughs> I'm still having fun. So I'll do another year. Beth? What does Vice Chair do? Pretty much you run the meeting when I don't show up. But like if I were to get hit by a truck or something, the when Vice Chair would become the chair. <laughs> If you win the um, lottery, not get hit by a truck. Oh, there we go. If I win the lottery and ditch you all, then um, then you would take over. But actually, what it means is if if I'm gone, you run the meeting. Oh. Anybody like to volunteer to be vice chair? I'm I'm doing it now, and I volunteer to do it again uh, to run okay. meetings. But if you were to get hit by a truck and couldn't do anything, I don't think I could handle being the chair full we, time. We could, we could have a meeting at that point to see if we had a different nominee for chair. There you go. At mid-year. Good idea. I nominate John Pereski for vice chair. Second. All right, any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Uh, aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Don Pereski. Yes, I. <laughs> Julie Chalf and I. All right. Six zero zero. That passes. Um, secretary. Jim, will, are you willing to do it again? I will happily continue. Yeah. I think you did a fantastic job. Agreed. All right. I'll nominate Jim. I move that Jim be the secretary. <laughs> Second. Okay. Any discussion? 
All right, we'll call a vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Julia Chalf and I. I feel like I should have made a whole slate and then just voted it all at once, but whatever. Um, so personnel board representative. Um, John, can you tell us what's involved in that? Like how often do they meet and what do they do? Uh, they formally meet once a month uh, and they, if there's a, they're, I think they've probably drafted everything they need to do, but they've been writing up formal descriptions of what the, the employee positions in the town are, what they do, who they report to, responsibilities. I think those might be all done. Uh, but if something comes along with change like that, they will vote on that. Uh, they vote on if there's a new person hired, they'll vote using the wage scale that we have. They will vote the starting salary for that. Um, a big project is coming up with an employee manual. They've been working on that for months. Um, but for the most part, it's been meeting once a month, um, unless something like they need to vote somebody's starting salary. They might have a second meeting in a month. Uh, I don't know if that explains it to your good enough for. Do they also, um, for the class comp plan, are they the ones who recommend a, um, a percent increase, a COLA? Does that come from them or? They will, they will, yeah, they will discuss and recommend it, but it, it's, um, I think ultimately the vote is the select board. And the finance committee votes that too, but I yeah. think they. But I don't think coal is part of it anymore. Um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, right, Brenda? If I think the comp plan is just, it is what it is. And right but they can vote uh the select board could vote to um offer a cola to that comp plan and if they do they would bring that to the personnel board for ratification right all right so john has been our rep in the past and he would like to move on from that position so is there anybody who would be willing to serve on the personnel board Speak. Normally, <laughs> this would be at my alley, but I can't. Ask. No, no, you can't. <laughs> I have, to, they meet on Mondays. I have trouble with Monday evenings. Ah, uh, okay. Beth, is that something you might be willing to take on? I, I just don't think I can take on another thing. Like, I, mm -hmm. yeah. what about David Sharp? Huh? What about Maybe. David Sharp? <laughs> All right, maybe we'll hold that position for next time. Um, the other position we have is CIPC. When did they uh, meet? Who? CIPC? Um, yeah, normally. I don't know. Mark, do you know? Yeah, um, usually after December, um, they will meet right up, um, usually weekly or bi-weekly from um, December all the way up in, in, until, you know, budgets are done. On a Wednesday or Thursday or when, what day of the week, I think is what he was wondering. Yeah, um, the day of the week can change depending on who's on the, on the committee because that, that's, a, that, that, that's usually a committee with mostly other committee appointees. Um, but usually it's, I, I believe in the past, we've done Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, not both each week, but we've either done Mondays or Wednesdays, usually wherever it fits. Who's on it now, Mark? Um, yeah, uh, it's myself. Um, there's one other um, moderator appointee, and then um, you know each each of the committees will have uh, well not each of the committees, but several committees will will have folks as well. Um, yeah, I mean honestly the. The committee itself changes every year from year to year. I've heard Skip was appointed to that, Skip Olmstead for the- Oh, great. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Can we vote him in? Even though he's not here? Skip, no. Skip. Yep. Skip's not on finance committee anymore. No, he's not. But, no. No. Mark no. He and John um, Pachuric both left us. Uh, James Pachuric's has his hand up. On and Skip's not on? Yeah. Right. I have a Jim, question. Go ahead. I have a question. Mark, are you uh, a member of the CIPC in another capacity? Uh, I am. Um, I mean, it, it could be one of those things where I, I, I guess, step down and then get appointed, uh, possibly. I don't know. Are, are you a member at, at large or are you part of a different, are you representing a different committee? Uh, at large, moderator. Okay. So maybe yeah. you could be the finance committee rep and CIPC could find another a member at large, that might be a good solution. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. So, you know, per, perhaps we could, you know, maybe talk about this next week when we, um, or not next week, but the, the next time we meet. Next time we meet. Yep. Yeah. John wants, wants to do it. Aren't we, aren't we short a person on the finance committee? We are. Dave Sharp is our other member, um, but he's not here tonight. He's our new other new appointee. So he's out of town this week. He um, so Dave was on um, school committee, the elementary school committee for a bunch of years. So he has really solid knowledge of the school budget, which I think will be helpful to our group. But go ahead, Jim. Oh no, sorry, I you can't can still up from before. Okay. Okay, so we're tabling both the personnel and the CIPC rep, and we're gonna nominate somebody next time we meet. Um, and in the interim, we're gonna reach out to, I guess, Dan Graves and see if he can come up with another CIPC member. I actually think that would be a good solution because if we nominate one of the rest of us, then we have two finance committee people on the, on the CIPC, which- um, right, Good point. Doesn't seem well, can I mean can Mark be a member at large and be a member of the finance committee? That seems like kind doesn't of doesn't seem like it. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean I think you're sort of de facto the finance committee rep if <laughs> you're still on that committee. Um I mean I don't know exactly like what the rules are if you're a lawyer, but you're I mean, you're gonna have trouble not representing finance committee if you're on finance committee. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like that one's squared away, whether it's official or not. Um, we so you, I mean, assuming that works out, are you willing to do it? Absolutely, yeah. That'd be I'd great. do it if it was on Mondays, but you don't okay. know. All right. Um, we will figure that out next time we meet. Okay. Um, Next, what thing I had written down was financial reports review. I talked to Brenda a little bit about that earlier today, and um, the the like the final FY whatever we just finished twenty two um, is not completely wrapped up. We have to do the transfers tonight, and then there's some more work that'll be done, and the whole thing will be fully wrapped up when free cash is certified, which is going to be hopefully sometime in August. So um, Brenda suggested, and I agree, that we wait until after that and then review all the financial reports from FY22 at that point is like our final review. But does anybody, Brenda, you sent us out the May reports a while back. So we do have those. Does anybody have any questions on any of those that we would like to ask tonight? Okay, so we'll just sort of, Tabling everything. We'll table that for the next meeting. So the next thing on our agenda is the transfers. Um, Brenda, do you have those there with you that you can present or do you need to pull up what I, I have? I do. Um, okay. Everyone yeah. else has gotten theirs uh, through email, correct? Yep. Okay. Just look. Um, let's start with, um, let's just start with the reserve fund. That is totally a, a a finance committee thing. And let's do the one for um, out of district Smith vocational costs. Okay, so what we're doing to give a little background is finance committee has control of reserve fund 
Um, and the reserve fund is for, I always mess this up. Um, it has to be unexpected and emergent or something. What are the two words that we have to? Uh, extraordinary and or unforeseen. So if there are expenses that could not have been planned for um, before, we can use the reserve fund to cover when any budget line item is below, um, it, it runs over what they had budgeted um, is basically what we're doing. And it's 100,000 and we've already spent I think around 60,000 of it. So we're at yeah. about 40,000 40, and some change is what's left. All right. So over on the out of district costs for Smith Vocational, um, mainly because uh, we put in requests for what the tuition is going to be for a fiscal year when we're doing the budget. And in this case, oh, thank you very much. Um, in this case, uh, and it happens every year, we don't seem to get that in until after the budget is set. So costs were $2,659.91 beyond what we had budgeted for for this fiscal year. So it has to be. I make a motion to accept the transfer of $2,659.91. Second. Hmm? Okay, any discussion? No, we'll do a roll call vote. Jim Cambius? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. Allison Vandervelden? Aye. Beth Brown? Aye. John Peresky? Aye. Julie Chalfant? Aye. That passes 600. All right, what's next? Okay. Uh, let's do the reserve fund transfer for unemployment compensation. Uh, I think we had a pretty healthy budget for this, but uh, we had a couple of employees that left our employment that we were not uh, expecting to pay unemployment costs for. Um, you know, usually this is totally a school thing um, and we have no control over it. But in this case, we actually had a town employee um, that took advantage of the unemployment uh, the ability to apply for unemployment uh, after she left our employment. So um, thought we had budgeted well, but we were short. Not not by much, but uh, six hundred and seventy five dollars and one cent. I move that we approve the expenditure of six seventy five oh one for unemployment compensation. Second. Any discussion? Okay, we'll um, call vote. Go ahead. Is there any way we can not approve this one? No, okay. I, I, if you um, really, there isn't at, at this point, we could have done an appropriation transfer in which case the select board would have been involved too, but it was up and, and um, I, I just went ahead and did it as a reserve fund transfer. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other discussion? No, roll call vote, Jim Cambius? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. Allison Vandervelden? Aye. Beth Brown? Aye. Tom Presky? Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye, that passes six zero zero. So the other reserve fund transfer request was for legal expense. Whoa. Yep, this one's hefty. Whoa. Um, you know, when the budget was set, uh, there were some reasonable expectations of what we would be paying for um, land use costs and for labor costs, but uh, we had a very busy year uh, in a lot of regards. So um, really nothing we could do about that. Um, we're still in negotiations with the um, highway union, and we have been for a year and a half, and that is an ongoing um, thing. Um, and then we've had some litigation that's come up that we weren't uh, expecting, so um, is where we're at. $20,306.33.
That's over the 74,000 that we had budgeted. I believe so. I believe that was the, the amount. Yeah. Are we allowed to know what the litigation is about? Like where that came from? I don't know. And Casey's not here to be able to tell us. Okay. Uh, What's the account uh, number, Brenda? What's that? What's it's, the account uh, number? It's, it's 001-151-5300. It's that series number. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that was the one that was on the I'm just looking at what we voted. So 2021 was 80,000, 2022 was 74,000, which we just increased by 20,000. And then 2023, we voted 75,5, so. I don't think it, I don't think it's any secret, Beth, that, that there are some um, litigation in regards to the, uh, the town's recreation land that we- okay. Well, that's kind of why I was asking because um, I was thinking about like, I think what Julie's thinking about maybe by what you were just saying is like, was this in regards to that and where are we going next year? Cause it doesn't look like it's easing up. And so I, I was just asking kind of those kind of questions. It is not easing up. So I'm, I'm anticipating that we'll be in the same place we are next year um, doing this same thing. Which means we might wanna just think like with every decision that we make that our budget for that line item is probably around $25,000 under what it needs to be for next year. So when we're, you know, when we're looking at the financials as they come in, we want to maybe just like do a little math um, because we can anticipate another, another transfer, reserve fund transfer similar next year. Do we have a motion? Oh, I can make the motion to recommend this. Um, Reserve fund transfer to legal expense for, uh, of twenty thousand three hundred six and thirty three cents. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any so, further discussion? <laughs> Go ahead. Saying, so, with that said, Beth, there there was some other litigation in regards to some other things like roads and and. Um, I, I couldn't even tell you what else, but we've also had some, I think more than anything, we've had additional labor costs this year. We've had some things come up um, with employees that have had to be dealt with. Um, I couldn't tell you, I, I can't even think about who that would have been or I couldn't tell you anyway, but um, we've certainly had, I think, probably more in labor costs. I don't know, John, you were going to look at the May statements. I think that labor costs were higher or uh, over more than, than even the uh, land use litigation costs were. Because we had so many um, negotiations this year or because the highway department going out so long or... Well, I think I think it, there were, you know, we had the the uh, contract negotiations with the police. We had the, uh, I think, excessive uh, contract negotiations with highway, but then we had some other labor issues that came up during the year that had to be dealt with um, that mm -hmm. we were not expecting. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much of the total legal for the year is related to labor. I don't have that figure in front of me, um, but it was high. I remember looking at it earlier today or yesterday and seeing that it was quite high. What did we budget for that line item, John? Originally? Yeah, do you know? 75.5. Oh, okay. For that. For that. Of which 5,500 was for labor. Okay. But that's, for, that's for next year. That's 2023, right? I'm sorry. You're right. right. Okay. I thought, I thought the budget for labor was like 12,000 and I yeah, thought right now is. we're at, we're at 24,000. That's, that's what sticks in my mind that it was actually double what we had budgeted. I mean, 
mean, I don't know what what we what else we could do about it. I, I presume that the select board is well aware of this cost, um, because if anybody has any control over like managing it, it would be them um, and Casey. So, I, I mean, I think we have to pay for it. So, I think uh, you know, on Casey's behalf, she's very cautious and make sure that that our council is is involved and everything that goes on so that we're doing everything right yeah and i and i definitely support that because i think that if you under include council then you have maybe a more extensive problem later um but if it's a matter i mean and i right without knowing the details of like of like each of these specific issues i just i just have to have faith uh, unless we have a conversation with them about about it, that they're not contributing to a drawn out process that that they don't need to contribute to. Um, right. I I'm obviously ignorant to that, so um, so I'm ready to vote on this. I'd like to see the select board get involved in this decision. I'm not I'm not comfortable without them weighing in on it i mean they, they may see it they in. may see it but they're not voting right I'll be voting on that tonight but i'm sure that they will um, offer their support when casey brings that to them at the meeting tonight but they julie, don't vote julie you might have an opportunity. Opportunity. you might have an okay. opportunity to follow up right with casey or um or the select board as the chair of this committee just to maybe like you know, make sure that it's it's no hard about the yeah. way it went last year, and then I can take that as an action item, right? Just so that they know. I mean, I would just like to make sure that I'm. Sh I can't imagine they don't know about this expense, but um, oh, they definitely know. Yeah, <laughs> but but right as the finance committee, I think it's our job to say to say like, hey, like what's what's the deal, and what are you? Is there anything you can do about it? You know, moving forward. Um, so they will see this tonight, mm -hmm. right? Isn't yes. it being presented to them tonight? So they will see that this is happening, but finance, it's finance committee has the responsibility for the reserve fund. So select board won't vote like legally to make the transfer. That's our responsibility. Right. Um, yeah, and, okay. it, and it could have been done as an appropriation transfer. I just chose it as a reserve fund transfer because there wasn't another account that was had that much money well no there, there were other accounts that had that much money but um i don't know i even though i don't have to do this anymore you know how we used to always have to if you if you did appropriation transfers they had to relate to each other i still try to do that to a certain extent and this one didn't have anything that really fit the the parameters so I just said we'll do this as a reserve fund transfer. I appreciate this because I think it's very transparent. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Any further discussion? So it's moved and seconded that we approve twenty thousand three hundred and six dollars and thirty three cents transfer from the reserve fund to legal expenses. Um and not part of the motion, but um, I will take an action item to go to the select board with um, our concern over the legal costs. Um, any further discussion? No, we'll do a roll call vote. Jim Cambius? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. Allison Vanderbilt? Aye. Beth Brown? Aye. John Presky? Nay, I'd like to see what the select board officially says about it. Okay, Julie Chalfin, I. So that passes five one zero. All right. So then we have two appropriation transfers. So the select board will vote on this tonight, and you are voting on it tonight as well. Um, let's do the one, um, the uh, town office expenses. Great, there it is. So we had overspent the town office expense by $1,022. 
um, there were actually some line items that were underspent and our publishing costs were way overspent. Uh, the net was the 1022 and so we're requesting 1100 just to make it an even number um, to come from the building inspection expense account uh, to cover that. And the reason we chose building inspection was because there was a, a great deal of land use hearing activity this year. Um, and some of those hearings had to be And so um, we felt like that was the appropriate place to take it from. I make a motion to recommend the appropriation transfer um, from building inspection to town office of $1,100. Second. Great, any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes 600. Which leaves us with the other one, huh? And the last one is the town building expense account. That one is is a big one. Um and in this case, uh, we had requested, oh, I suppose you want to have a motion first, don't you? I can make a motion to recommend this transfer. Uh, it looks like 15,000 from General Highway to Town Building. Yes. I'll second that. Okay. Um, so the Town Building uh, miscellaneous repairs account is the account that is uh, over by quite a bit. And there were really, uh, I went back and looked at the detail. There were two things that, that drove that. And one was um, two separate radiator leaks at the senior center required a great deal of um, repair. Uh, some of that went through insurance. Uh, the smaller one did not because we had a $5,000 deductible. Um, I can't, I can't even remember the total cost, but I want to say it was close to $10,000 and uh, for the town to pay. And then also had some repairs to the elevator at the library that we were not expecting. So the two of those together were the main drivers for the um, overage. Chose to um, cover that with general highway payroll uh, as they had extra money in their account this year. Um, Brenda, what, what's the decision to transfer 15000 instead of 12000 Because I have two more days to pay bills for that line item, just in case. Okay. <laughs> um, You're never going to come out of the woodwork, so I just said we're just going to put a little extra in there just in case. Especially given the last minute catastrophes that it sounds like you experienced. Yes, or the last minute invoices. We we. Believe it or not, we got an invoice today for Now Kevin's gonna take it out of his highway budget because that's what he does when snow and ice is all covered for the year. But, um, and it apparently had gotten lost in his email while he was out sick. And um, so you can do anything but pay it. So yes, things come out of the woodwork. So you could get, um, you could get another FY22 invoice, even up till July 17th that you then have to pay out of this line. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I see why you did it. Yeah, frustrating, but yes. Okay. Any other discussion on this line item? Yeah, the, re the repair to the elevator, what happened? I don't know uh, the details of that. It was like three thousand, thirty-three, maybe thirty-five hundred dollars. Jim, do you know? No, this is the first I've heard of it. Okay. It didn't come up um, at the last meeting. I they have it inspected. Of... They have it inspected every year, and uh, I think it was during the inspection they found some problems that they had nope. to. Have. I wonder if we have an issue with lack of preventative maintenance. I don't yeah, think I so. With to, I have to wonder that. With it being inspected every year, I would doubt that because I'm sure that the inspection is supposed to keep up on that. Well, I think what he means is, you know, active maintenance rather than just seeing if anything is wrong. I see. Right. And 
Uh, almost certainly, because we never spend money on maintenance. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the town is terrible about that. <laughs> I mean, I guess what, you know, what needed to be, I'm just, what needed to be repaired? I, I don't know. Uh, without voice, I, I, I couldn't tell you. Do we want to ask um, either, so who we ask, somebody from the library or somebody from highway to, Say figure that out most no. in the library because I don't think the highway department would know because what happens is, is um, Candace Hill, she says okay this was for the, the elevator this had problems and Kevin will you pay for it Kevin says yes I'll pay for that and it goes against the town building account uh, it seems to me that the town has a history of not addressing maintenance issues on a timely basis. It's true. Um, and this is, might be another example of that. Very well could be, um, as well as everything else. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the senior center is the same thing. We had these radiator leaks. Oh my gosh, yeah. Probably been happening for years, but it, it took our new director to recognize it and do something about it, right? So yeah, I, so the, the big problem is lack of preventive maintenance. I don't know how we address that. Well, if you remember right, when we did our budget this year, we did budget for um, additional monies in that account, hopefully to do that. Does that mean somebody's gonna be on top of it and be proactive? Uh, no, but it does mean that we the account to be able to address it. Yeah, I feel like we need a person. Go ahead, Allison. I was just going to say, it seems like a combination of uh, historically being underfunded and also it's a management issue, which is each department head advocating for their department and getting their issue to the top of the pile. Like, I think that at least from what I've seen in the last few years, I think I, I feel like the town is improving in that area a little bit. Um, but of course, I don't know everything that goes on. <laughs> Um, we do talk about maintenance though. Well, we, we talk about maintenance. There is a highway department individual who is charged with building maintenance, but I have not seen him step inside our building for at least a year, year and a half. So I, what can I tell you? I, they're busy. Um, they don't have time to come and check those. Um, I don't know. That's disconcerting. Yes. That, that, and I think that needs to be addressed to the select board. We're making sorry. a list for me. I well, also- outside, I could open the door and yell it at them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also think um, if Kevin was well this year, um, that he might've found a different way to fix these things without the- That's true. Incurring right true. now. I think part of that is that we were missing our department head um, yeah. and people were flat out just trying to get things done that had to be done. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. So what do I don't we think do? we've voted this yet. Any further discussion on this item? Uh, I, I do have one question. I was looking at what I was typing rather than the, the uh, thumbnail screen. Who seconded this? I think I did. I don't. Okay. All right. I'll say you did. <laughs> okay. I'll say All right. So it has been moved and seconded to transfer fifteen thousand dollars from General Highway Payroll to Town Building and Miscellaneous Repairs. Any further discussion? Further discussion. Go ahead, John. Is there a formal way that we can go to the select board saying, it, and this is if we agree as a committee, uh, that we're uncomfortable with the way maintenance is being managed. Can we, I mean, I'm saying let's vote this through, but I think we need to formalize, or at least I need, I would like to see us formalized that we're uncomfortable with the maintenance situation. I, I don't know how we do that. 
I have some thoughts on that, but I don't want to interject, especially like if Julie, you had a, I don't know if you were leaning in to speak. Okay. Go ahead. Um, we, we, this is like more zoomed out, like what are the roles of the committees? How do we want to work? How do we work with each other and the other parts of the town government? And sort of what I envision being a good process um, would be, you know, the finance committee is sort of like the CFO of an organization, right? We're looking at, mm -hmm. at what are the issues, what are the problems, and what are our, what are our main concerns? And then I think in the past where the breakdown has been is that the only communication is that between entities is, is either at a meeting where um, where there is an agenda and something has to happen because there's a time deadline and there isn't always enough enough time to kind of process that or it's you know like one person's conversation behind the scenes it's not an open meeting it doesn't represent the whole view of the, the entire committee so what i think might be helpful is if we start building a culture of like the finance committee identifying what are the broader concerns, what are the priorities, um, and then being able to translate that and whether that's the chair in a, in a, you know, a different individual meeting with a select board member or the town manager or, or at a select board meeting or whether the full select board comes to, I mean, however we want to do that, but I think the finance committee needs to decide what are the priorities of topics we're worried about transmit that information to the management of the town, which is really the town manager and the select board, and then um, basically have like a set of strategic priorities that we ask for some follow up on when it isn't time to vote an appropriation or a transfer. Um, because by the time we have the bill, we have to pay the bill. <laughs> so like from a finance committee perspective, like there's not much to discuss if we have bills we have to pay, we're not going to go on unpaid if we have the funds because that just hurts us. Um, so I think that's sort of like a relationship thing and and I'm comfortable. I mean, I feel like Julie, especially you're taking notes on the, that other issue I already forgot about, but you wrote it down and yeah. this, this might be another one to see if maybe we can just like highlight these priorities for that town management in order to like then maybe actually get the the loop closed to hear what it is they're doing or or what their strategies are because then they have to work with the different department heads to actually make this stuff happen so we're like we're really siloed right now and we only have action items when they come up but i think it's appropriate to determine what we want to happen communicate it and then create a space for them to communicate back excellent plan i agree Maybe we should do a presentation at select board meetings. It has to be on the agenda. I'm just yeah. throwing that out for discussion, that's all. And it's nice when, when it, you know, there is one select board rep, at least at our finance committee meetings or when Casey can come. Um, usually there's at least somebody. So this is sort of an anomaly meeting. But given that they're not here, the fact that Julie as the chair is willing to bring it to them makes me feel better, but maybe we can the next step is to work on how do we close that loop so we can hear back and then follow up. Go ahead, uh, Mark. Mark has, yeah. yeah, I wonder if there's any way that we can make a report that highlights how much deferred maintenance we've paid for and then compare that against how much we may have saved if we, you know, did regular maintenance as opposed to that deferred maintenance. I think that could be very persuasive in trying to like Call, call the action. This problem here. So do we have that kind of data? I don't, yeah, that's no. what I'm wondering, like, you know, if it's possible, like, do we have like things that, you know, we've had to vote on, I mean, this is my first, you know, hour being here, but you know, do we have things that we voted on in the past where we might be able to go through and ret retroactively look at them and, and say like, well, this is how much it cost us. Perhaps we might want to spread this out over, you know, uh, a, a yearly, budget as opposed to you know getting whacked every couple of years with something big. I, um, the, the trouble is that to some extent it's a matter of opinion as to whether you know did the machine break because of deferred maintenance or because it is 20 years too old or you know 
there is a subjective component to that, I guess is what I'm saying. And, and as far as this appropriation line item goes, I don't remember in my eight and a half years that um, I don't remember us ever covering a shortage in town building maintenance. But I do know that there have been capital expenditures because in excess because of the lack of proactive maintenance. Right? Well, that, that's where I'm coming from because like, <clears throat> you know, the highway department's doing a good job now of, you know, having like a cycle that they purchase things, but, you know, we're playing catch up there. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of why, why I, I was thinking that, you know, maybe if, if there's other, other areas where we might have that, that we might be able to maybe generate some sort of report or something, because it certainly is a thing in capital. We have, we see certain departments that are playing catch up. You know, we could, if nothing else, ask Kevin for his opinion. Right. Since it, since it is, a, as I said, there's a subjective component, get the subjective impression of the guy who's most involved with it. You know, um, just, just as a side note, um, in fiscal year 22, we had voted for $52,000 worth of town building, uh, town hall repairs and uh, nothing has been spent to date. And I think part of that is because you come up with, you know, you have somebody come up with all of these repairs that need to be done, but um, supposed to carry that out. And, and I'm sure that um, the information didn't get to Kevin as to what needed to be done and Kevin being sick for half of the year didn't help. But, um, but no, none of those uh, repair items were taken care of, none. And I, so there's if, a, go ahead. I, have, I have some additional thoughts that I'd rather not say in, in an open meeting that I'll do. <laughs> Sorry. So this is something town building advisory committee has talked about quite a bit and the consensus of that group is that there should be a person in the town who is responsible for building maintenance who goes around and looks at all the buildings and is capable of doing minor repairs themselves and also scheduling bigger picture maintenance items. Um, and we have started working on kind of a list by building of the types of things that should be done, but um, it's going to take probably a year to get at least to get that list together. So there is some, but it's all sort of without a person to manage it. So sort of what, what we decided is we needed, we need a plan, we need a funding and we need a, a person. <laughs> and so, so last year, um, as part of the budget cycle, we did increase the maintenance budget. So the, the funding piece is starting to show up and then the, the plan is starting to show up, but without a, you know, a belly button, it's, um, uh, I don't know. So I think we need to talk to Kevin about it. Um, Can you say that Kevin was responsible for our a little earlier that Kevin's responsible for the maintenance? Uh, no, one of his employees is. One of his employees. It's, it's actually a job description from what I've been told. But there is a person that's been assigned to do it. That's correct. What I was told was that that job description was written. They hired a person to do it. That the person they hired actually did it for some short period of time, but then left town employment for another job. And then when they hired the new replacement person, the new replacement person hasn't really done that job. They've just sort of been absorbed into general highway. Um, but this is, a, that's all kind of hearsay. I shouldn't be saying that in an open meeting because that's all just like stuff people have said to me, but I haven't tracked it down. Um, but it sounds like there, so town building advisory committee has this concern, finance committee has this concern. So it sounds like the next step is to go to highway um, and get their feedback and then um, maybe go to select board at that point or maybe we can invite Kevin to come to finance committee and talk to us about 
this. I don't know that he's back up to full time yet. Not, not, he shouldn't be, but he, he has been. And I don't mm. know that I, I personally would need to hear directly from Kevin, especially if his time could be better, especially in the department that we want to do this maintenance. Um, right. But but if he's if he's on the same page as somebody else, you know, Casey or a select member who's who's able to relay that update back to us because they were meeting anyway, like I'm comfortable with that. But it'd be nice to just yeah, loop back in. Okay. And as usual, speaking only for myself. <laughs> When I say, I, you know, doesn't need to be a specific person. I know other people have different thoughts. Should we vote on this issue? We so we actually have first. an open motion for the transfer. So let's vote the transfer and then we'll um, do that. So is there any further discussion on the transfer of $15,000? No. Okay. So let's go ahead and vote that. Um, so anybody need me to restate what we're voting on? No. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Mandevelden. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes six zero zero. Now, is there an action item? Does anybody want to make a motion for some kind of action item related to this whole maintenance discussion? Uh, yes. Um... I move that we um, consult with Kevin and gather information about whether, uh, th about suggestions about ways to improve maintenance and present that to the select board. Second. I like that, yeah. Any discussion? I'm just... I, I think it's a great idea. I'd love to hear what his thoughts are because he might identify something we have not even thought of as the biggest bottleneck or barrier. Right. Equipment, maybe it's a person, maybe it's, you know, a performance issue, maybe, it, who knows? So I, yeah, sounds great. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Well, I moved it. And John yep. seconded it. Yep. Any discussion? I think we already did that. Somebody's going to have to invite him to the next meeting, right? Oh, one, one of us can go talk to him offline. Does, does anybody want to go talk to him? You mean um, about his Talk to Kevin about this, this, yeah, and get feedback from him on I what they're doing. I think you should talk to what, the committee. That's my, my feeling. A lot. All right, I'll reach out to them and um, talk to them about that. So, any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. All right, that passes six zero zero. Okay, so there's two big picture things that I wanted us to spend a few minutes talking about. One is a, as I said, debt position discussion, and the other is a financial policies preview. I'm going to do the financial policies first because that is easier and quicker. Um, let me just share this because it's not done yet. Right? So um, I've been working with Brenda um, for like a year and a half off and on um, looking at a set of financial policies. And the idea behind them is that they are not, they're not law, they're policies, but it gives us written down a lot of things that we sort of say to each other, oh, we're going to put this much aside for um, the reserve fund, our free cash, we ought to target about this much for next year, whatever, all that kind of discussion. And it, it sort of writes it down. So we have a draft version that we took from um, a sort of 
looked at some other towns and what they did. Um, I gave it to Brenda about two hours ago, so she hasn't had time to thoroughly read it. Um, so I just wanna let you know that this is out there. And so what I think we wanna do is give Brenda time to like really review it and give me feedback on it. And once we've gone through that, I wanna send it out to the whole committee so that you guys have a chance to read it and then we'll meet and, and discuss it and like go through each item and have the discussions. So I have the sort of, you know, this, this is what's in it. And then I have the writing and then I have a bunch of like what we need to, you know, think about and do related to that. Right. So we'll go through my comments and then everybody else's comments on it and um, review what it is. So that's coming. The schedule I think we targeted is Brenda's gonna try and get through it and give solid review by the 1st of September. Um, and then she's gonna be out of town for a couple of weeks. So sometime late September, we'll target to have a meeting among us. So that'll give everybody like a month to review this once you have it in your hands. Um, and we'll talk through it at that point. And the other, I guess the other comment is that this stuff is, um, it's not like what the professionals need to do to do their job. So it, it does, it's nothing about like what Brenda needs to do or what the treasurer needs to do or what laws we have to follow or anything like that. It's more like policy that those of us who don't do this as our full-time profession, you know, things we should be thinking about as we come to, um, doing our job. Okay. Any questions or comments on any of that? Other than that, it's a great idea, no. Yeah, I'm glad we're doing okay. it. So um, that should be coming. And it's it says 13 pages, but it's really not that bad. Like there's a lot of blank space um, in it too. So it is really not great to sell it to us. <laughs> So, all right. So there's that. The other thing is that, um, oh, you know what I should do? So I, I think that the finance committee should have an opinion on debt. Um, and part of the financial policies are what our debt limit is and what our um, debt service should be as sort of a percentage of our overall um, budget. Um, there are, I'm just going to share this too. So I think we've talked about this before, yeah. but um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that the town, that, that is being talked about among people in the town, all of which, much of which requires debt to, to meet. So we have already committed the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant and then we have, we're still wrapping up the highway garage, the school roof, the Oxford property. That is all already sort of already committed to. Um, and if you lay that out um, year by year, these green ones here are the ones that we've already committed to. And so this lays out year by year what um, we're paying in principal and interest on each of the, these different pieces of loan. And if you add that all up at the top, you get, here's our total debt. Here's what the town is paying for debt service broken down into um, principal and interest. And then enterprise is what the enterprise funds, so that's the wastewater treatment plan, right? And then this is um, Community Preservation Act, um, if there's anything against Community Preservation Act. Um, and then this is linked. So let me see. So I should be able to, so this is stuff that is out there that people are talking about. So the building that the senior center was most recently in, we've started calling the 1888 building to be really clear, to, to try and be clear about what building we're talking about. So the 1888 building, we have a proposal out to use CPA funds. You guys know this. Um, we're gonna over the next year, try and get a solid estimate together so that 
at next town meeting, we can vote to whether or not we want to refurbish the building. That would be entirely using CPA funds. And we can go up to about 5 million total using CPA funds between what we have in hand and what we can borrow against future CPA um, income, right? Revenues, I guess, is a better word. So there's that project. There's the library building, um, which this is just a guess. Maybe it'll cost $12 million to do. We should get about $4 million in a grant. They're doing fundraising. Huh? Oh, the grant came through? That, uh, Monday. Excellent. Okay. So now we know. Um, so four right. million. It's just shy of four million. Um, they want to raise a million in fundraising, and that'll leave whatever. I thought left. the grant was going to be for fifty percent of it, so the total project would be eight million. The grant was for fifty percent of the uh, estimated cost at the time that we applied, which was something like twenty nineteen. Um, and since then, um, building and materials expenses have shot through the roof. For four million dollars worth. Forty percent increase in average building costs. Okay. Just over the past few is, years, right? and not necessarily stopping. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, but not okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. It is what um, it is. Yeah. There's the town common going to be done with CPA funds. So there's no loan associated with that. And then these are like farther out and unknown. So there's there's desire to do a community community slash senior center um, with some sort. So these are numbers that I just guessed, right? I don't know. It's going to cost $15 million, made that up. Um, if we had a $10 million grant that they were able to come up with from somewhere, who knows where, that would leave us $5 million of, of a loan um, to do, right? Old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. There's a lot of there. I don't know what's going to be done with that. Um, but the estimate right now is in the 19 to $22 million range for that old Deerfield plant. Um, the expectation is expectation. The hope, um, there are only either seven or eight houses like Deerfield residents on that. The entire rest of that plant is nonprofits between Deerfield Academy, Eagle Brook, the Mint and the uh, TVMA and the Historic Deerfield. Old Deerfield, Historic Deerfield, right? Um, so there's a lot of discussion with the nonprofits about how this can be funded, and I, in in my opinion, that it would be very hard to get the town to vote to fund this out of town funds. So, but at the um, same time, the town technically does own the facility, so we are going to have to be the ones to write the check. Yeah. 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 So this is still very uncertain. Although there is a meeting this Friday with the um, um, town council to discuss different ways this can be approached. Um, so I don't know, that's, that's very up in the air. Um, and then the other big project going on is subsidized senior housing um, with, you know, guessing 15 million for that as well. Um, the discussion around this right now, the things that are being said is that Sunderland was able to put in subsidized senior housing in Sunderland um, with something on the order of $500,000 from their CPA funds and the entire rest of the project was covered by grant funding. So the, the intent of the committee is to pursue that model and not to have um, whatever not have it paid for from town funds. Um, and it's, I think it's far enough out. Go ahead. I'm just wondering if we already have a relationship and a conversation going with like Gina Gavani and the housing people who presumably um, are responsible for that grant funding. Like, I think yes. Okay. Um, the, I, I am not, 
involved day to day in that committee. Um, but there's that committee is pretty active. They meet weekly and they have like when I hear them talk about it, they have talked to the folks from um, Sunderland who've been doing it. They've been talking to FERCOG. They have a grant. They applied for a grant to okay. do some preliminary studies okay. for it. So I think they are actively. So that that answers my question. I just was sort of worried that like, oh, Sunderland got a $15 million grant. We'll do the same thing, right? Like I was just kind of worried that. No, and there's, um, I mean, another piece of it is that Part of being able to get grant funding for this depends on how much um, affordable housing we have in Deerfield, which is not very much at all. And Sunderland has significantly more affordable housing because they have a lot of student housing there. Um, so there's there's definitely, I mean, it, it's challenging, but there is a group working on it. And the intent from that group is that we would not be paying town money to do this. Um, but anyways, so if you, so I'm gonna send this spreadsheet out to everybody, but this I hope is still linked. So if you, this says change this column to play with the results and hopefully this, yeah, all right. So this is just, see how these are all zero now down here. Um, this is just what we're already obligated to pay, right? These are the, the loans that we already have and interest rate and everything that's there. Um, and then you can add back in, you know, you can play with it. Well, what if this is, you know, 6 million instead of 5 million or something? I don't know. Um, you can fill these numbers back in and they're saved over here, what I had originally. So you can put that back in. Um, and it'll add, yeah, here's that, that funding back in. Um, the assumptions are our debt limit is 5% of our um, uh, assessed value of the properties in town. Um, so that comes out to about 40 million. I mean, it's just almost right at 40 million. And then if we assume that our debt service should not exceed 10% of our budget, um, that comes out to about one and a half million. So if these numbers, like if you add all this stuff back in, then you can see we exceed our debt limit next year and we exceed our you know, debt service limit here. The other thing that you have back here in this third page is the tax impact. Um, and if you look at the, here's our total assessed value. And then here's the price of our average single family house and our tax rate from, this is all from last year. So if, um, If we end up borrowing, however, this much money, um, then the impact, here's the impact on our tax rate. And this is the impact on our single family home tax bill, average single family home tax bill. So you can see the percent that um, it increases over. So this is not cumulative, right? This is, you know, if we borrow this this year, it'll be an 11% increase over last year's tax bill. That, that explained that at all clearly. I felt like I was very convoluted when I said that. 11% increase or just 11%? Right. So it's 11% increase over last year's tax rate if we borrow $52 million next year. So um, if you wanted to like, project for I'm just trying to make sure I understand the spreadsheet you're trying to project forward and say like 2030 you're not we wouldn't be 13 percent over the current tax rate we would be it would be compounding each year with those no rates. so that that's this is 13 percent over this year's tax rate each of those is over this year's right so that year is not compounded right okay okay
Um, Can we stay with this one for a minute? This tax impact thing? Yeah, no, no, the other one, the one you just had for the this colors. Guy. Yep. That, um, this is telling me that we need to prioritize our capital projects or these big projects. Exactly. Yes, exactly. I, mean, I don't, I don't think, and I don't mean to pick on the library, but should we borrow $8 million to do the library? And again, I'm not against the library, but maybe the things that are more important, maybe the things that are less important, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we need to make those decisions before we jump into yeah, these the, huge the projects. The timing is terrible because this grant, you know, $4 million not, right. is a pretty big gift to us not to look in the, to look in the mouth, but basically we can't, postpone it, uh, at least not that I'm aware of. And, you know, yes, it really would have been nicer if we could have started work in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can't postpone it and it's also not gonna work the same way either. So up until now, it's just basically pounds getting in line, but um, MBLC is gonna change the way that all this works. So it's actually gonna be harder for them. Um, but I, I mean, I, I also like every time I sit down and start crunching numbers, like the number gets bigger and bigger for the, the total cost of like square footage for new construction in general. And then also, if you look at other libraries in the Commonwealth, that number keeps climbing too. So, you know, any number that we put in there, we're, we're going to have to be okay with it being a bigger number. Yes. Well, and it's tough because like the really big borrowing we have to do is really not optional, you know, like a, a wastewater treatment plant is not a, um, a luxury. It's a thing that we are required to have, or we will start paying major fines, right? Like exactly. And also we'll be living in a place that doesn't have Okay. Doesn't have to treat the wastewater, and nobody would like that, even though it's not sexy. The um, library board has, at least informally, committed to trying to hold the cost to the the current amount. Uh, the eight million. Discussing, you know, ways to try to you know scale back the project if necessary, but the problem is that a cursed grant. Is based on the design submit the, the 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 you know notional design proposed back in 2019. So if we reduce that too much, I don't know how much I don't know at what point that will invalidate the grant again. There's really not a lot of wiggle wiggle room. They have to keep the square footage the same. The design can't substantially change. Like when you start pulling that thread too, like there there's not a lot of cost savings to be had there, unfortunately. I w would be interesting to, I mean, and we can play with this, it looks like, but to take the library out because part of me is like, you know, $8 million borrowing is a huge amount. And the library is the example, but it's because it's like the next biggest thing that is optional. Um, you know, we take that out, we could look at it. And if it was a trivial impact over each year, you know, then I'm like, well, we should you know, not throw away a $4 million opportunity. But if it is a non-trivial impact each year, and that's the thing about borrowing and debt is you can spread it out. And, you know, sometimes you can get great things done, but, um, right. But we, we need to determine like what this committee's position is on it and I don't know. I was going to say something, something else in there, but like where we've Greenfield's going to have a beautiful library. And I think what other towns near us are going to have a big, no one has a pretty nice library. And yeah. Right. Building. Right. Yeah. So like, it, is it redundant? I mean, and I love, I, I am a big supporter of libraries in general, but I don't want to get into a situation where we can't we're going to have deferred maintenance on our new wastewater treatment plant because we can't afford it because we have this library and now we've got like just 
Any of you knows um, uh, somebody who knows Elon Musk? Um, you know, <laughs> that's that's a way out. <clears throat> yeah, but he'd change his mind two thirds of the way through. <laughs> what was funny? Um, so I put together a presentation. I'm tired as these meetings drag on. Um, I put together a presentation that I gave to the CCI group a couple, three, four weeks ago, talking about all the projects and ways we could fund them. Um, I can go through that. Um, it would probably take half an hour. Maybe we should schedule another meeting to do that. Or are you guys up for that now? meeting either way <laughs> but i always i always say it's a long meeting and i want to do it another time <laughs> are we going to meet with kevin should we maybe do we another one just kevin, maybe we can make it the same meeting okay um all right i i'll send out the spreadsheet i'll send out do you want slides in advance that I put together without the presentation? Yeah. I'll send that out. Um, and I just um, say, I'm just worried about the messaging around, especially the library, just because I know that people are, they really, people really want it and are really attached to it. And the, I know the messaging, especially coming from the library, is like, yay, we did it, we got this grant. Um, and I think it's just gonna be, it's gonna make it a difficult conversation to be able to talk about it. I don't know, it's just worth saying. I, yeah. But I wonder how many people in the town are aware of the debt limit. It's a really hard thing to understand. I've been on this committee for years right. now but and it's, but it's a reality that we have to we have to deal with it. Yeah. So I do think that the majority of people involved in well the select board and the that CCI group, I think they are all all over the debt limit now. I think they understand it. That's good. Um, I don't know. General public probably doesn't even know about it. But I think um, even the term debt limit is probably very confusing because. Like, I got to relearn what this stuff means every time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll send out the spreadsheet so people can play with it. I'll send out slides. We'll meet again and discuss it again. Um, and in the interim, I'll see if I can get hold of Kevin and talk to him about um, preventative maintenance. Um, Are we going to have him come to a meeting? I just go one on one with you. I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk to him about it and see sort of how he was so sick. But that's my only hesitation right. is that I don't want to put more work on him and drag him into the evening, you know, if it's going to be hard on him. Let's um, leave it up to you. Your but, judgment. How's that? Yeah, I'll talk to him about it and see. Um, see what we can do. Um, Sally, when's your baby due? Who date is August 24, but we're not going that long. <laughs> okay. So if we meet Maybe by the end of the next day, we month. should be good, right? Yeah. So, um, okay. So if I we am, look. I'm going to be uh, out of town the, the 12th through 15th of August, I think. Me too. I'm on the 14th through the something or other. All right. So, 18th, all right. Um, other than so, that, I'm pretty good. What are people doing the week of the... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's not me. That, I, that week is actually okay for me. I, I just realized I was looking at somebody else's schedule. <laughs> what about August 2nd? Are Tuesdays better? Tuesdays are good for me. August 2nd? Yeah. That work? I'm gonna have um, next week. That's my plan. Say again. What? 
I said, I'm, I'm going to have the baby the next week. So if we do August 2nd, I should August be in August. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, All right. Great. August 2nd, what time? 6 o'clock, 5.30? 5 o'clock? Earlier the better for me. But five Can we make 5 o'clock? 5 is good for me. All right. 5 o'clock, August 2nd. Tuesday, and the agenda will be debt discussion and preventative maintenance. Are you thinking that'll be in person or Zoom? Or uh, we'll see. Uh, do people have an opinion? We always leave it up to your discretion because you'll be talking with them. In person meetings. Yeah, but if he's sick. And we have good discussion when we're in person. And you can see when somebody's like almost saying something. <laughs> I have to uh, present. All right, we'll do it in person. Five o'clock on oh, August. I with Kevin. I'm sorry. What? Oh, you met with Kevin? I thought you were, when you were talking about in person, I thought you met with Kevin. You were talking about our meeting. Yeah, about us. I was on a different channel. Okay. Got it. All right. And maybe we'll do, um, oh, personnel, uh, CIPC and personnel committee too. Um, we'll add that um, to the end. Does personnel, they have a meeting next Monday? I guess. Yeah. I and what we really care about is the financial impact of stuff. So that's okay. Huh? I think we'll just have to. I, I, I could fill in, but I'm going to be away. All right. We'll just have to not be represented for once. Okay. Anything else on the? Uh, we don't have any public, so we don't have any public comment. There, select like the next meeting time. We did that adjourn. I Anything moved. else we talk about today? What? Nope. Go ahead. The move that we adjourn. Second. The meeting right. next meeting is going to be at five, right? Five p.m. August second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That was unanimous.